So more and more Jamaicans that seem to be adopting a stance against corporal punishment. And the chief executive officer of the National Parenting Support Commission, Kesia Carr, agrees with that position. Is it time for Jamaicans to put the belt down? Good morning. Good morning. morning. Welcome thank you. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. It's morning thank time. You. When did I look up my mother every week? I <laughs> 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 think she didn't know so the belt must put down. <laughs> and perhaps many other mothers and fathers too. Oh, yes. but, uh, um, corporal punishment means what? Well, it's really any physical punishment, any physical administration of pain. So if you pinch somebody, if you tell somebody to stand in a corner too long enough that they're feeling pain, certainly hitting, beating, whooping, spanking, all of those things, yeah. corporal punishment. Father, at St. George's, when I was there, used to make a whole out here and have this big ruler and you had some lovely clapping mm -hmm. like that. That is considered corporal punishment. It's corporal punishment, punishment and absolutely. And you are saying no form of, 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 no of, form corporal, of corporal punishment. punishment. No form, no, no matter form. what happens. No matter what happens. Why? Well, we are seeing a direct correlation between corporal punishment and other behaviors that children display. So when you resolve an issue by spanking a child, what you're actually teaching that child is that all issues should be resolved through a violent act because Corporal punishment is a violent act. And um, we're seeing too much aggression in very young children. And certainly that plays out not only in schools, but in the wider community, general society. So because there is a correlation between coercive parenting in general, so not just corporal <coughs> punishment, but if you hurl abusive words at your children, we're seeing that it really does foster aggression and then violent behaviors in the children. And these play out in homes, in schools, and obviously in society. People would say in, in the United States of America, where they also say no corporal punishment, that um, aggression is still very, very prevalent. Mm -hmm. um, and we see lots of videos with, with mm -hmm. students in class mm -hmm. who are out of control. Um, and they show violence, and they attack mm -hmm. teachers, and they have no discipline. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a fear that if you remove that, it may not work. Well, mm. What's your response to it? Well, then there are other things going on in that society too. Okay. Um, so I won't say definitively that because corporal punishment was removed, mm. then that's a reason for all the violence that we're seeing there. What I know though is that when parents are permissive... No, I'm, I'm suggesting that if even if you remove it, yes. ag aggression still happens. Uh, yes, I, I got that. Right. But I also know that much of what we're seeing too yeah. stems from poor parenting or okay. what we call, we say ineffective parenting. Mm. And so one of the things we look at as a commission is what your parenting style is. So if you're a permissive parent, which means that there are no disciplinary structures in the home, there are no boundaries, no limitations, children get to do anything they want to do from very early, then we are not going to expect that society that's governed by rules that children are going to adhere to those rules because they never had that kind of socialization to begin with. I, so the, the point is that we know that there are other practices that we have proven that work very, very well, yeah. that can replace corporal punishment. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that uh, yes. you're, you're wrong there, but I, I said earlier, and I was serious, that my mm -hmm. mom used to hit. I mm -hmm. never hit anyone, mm -hmm. even though I got lots of yes. beating from my mom. So the suggestion that because you lick me, mm -hmm. I'm going to lick you, mm -hmm probably doesn't hold for everyone. And, and that would also depend too on what was going on in your family. Perhaps there were other values that were communicated. But they you were. see, there you go. But you see, not every parent has a language to communicate and to explain to children why certain behaviors are unacceptable. So you're hitting a child for one, you're not explaining what the, what the boundary was. You're not explaining what the expectation was. You're not explaining what the child did that was wrong. And a lot of times we tell children to what was wrong, but we don't replace it and tell them what they should do. So perhaps the communication structures were different in your family, but we can't ignore the findings and there are too many now that, saying, that are saying coercive parenting in general is just bad. So, um, many parents we sit with say the very same thing you're saying, Neville, and they're saying, but I am fine. But by the time we sit with them and we start to peel back the layers a little bit, 
it becomes so cathartic. Then you realize there's so many issues. There's so much baggage, as one parent told me yesterday in a session we had in Region 3, so much baggage that they never realized subconsciously was still there. That stemmed from that kind of punishment. Yep. And, that, and because also parenting, to a great extent, is modeled behavior. We sometimes parent the way we were parented. Yeah. Then you have that kind of those kinds of behaviors perpetuating. I work I work in a high school myself as a football mm -hmm. coach, yes. and, and not only at the school that I work, but you hear horror stories about mm -hmm. students where they get beat up. Yes. Um, if they are doing that now, and they can be hit by a teacher, mm -hmm. if you take that away, we, you don't think the kids who are What's, what's the kind of behavior they call it? Maladaptive. Re don't, don't those kids go and say, well, them, them can't lick me now, so the sir can't do me nothing. But, but, Tump off him head top. So, um, but, you're but, not, you're not. but here's the thing, though, because I've been an educator for 26 years, taught in high school for a very, very long time. I also know that there is a way to communicate with children in a very consistent way. You see, too often we we apply a particular strategy and then we claim that it does work. What's the suggestion you have? So if you, you, you're going to replace it with anything? With positive practices. In fact, what already... Do you mean by, what do you mean by So these are practices? other ways that you can punish. I don't even like that word. Give me a specific example. So for example, so you, you pull away... A teacher, I'll tell you now. Pull up, take away a reward. Take away something that the child really, really likes. From the school and or the, the, from the family? The, well, we expect both because when school is mirroring what... What, what family, when families are mirroring what school is doing, then we have um, better opportunities to succeed. So then we want you to remove some kind of privilege. But we also want conversations with the children because never what we respond to with corporal punishment, we're responding to a behavior. I still usually. want a specific example because so, when you say take away a privilege, so, what privilege so, do so, I have? So children, for example, are very into technology right now. And when you remove a, a teenager or a young child's phone, okay. it's almost like they're disabled. They can't function. But if you remove that, but you have to also explain why are you taking this away at this particular time, then it works. But you see, the earlier we start with the positive, the better. So my, chal um, my challenge yes. um, cases, I, <coughs> I see the end result of mm -hmm. removing the corporal punishment. My challenge is the steps to getting there. Yes, yes. Because never raise the salient right. point. Right. Um, it has to start or be supported by parenting. Absolutely. But that's not going to happen overnight. Mm -mm. So how are we going to get parents in general to start ad adapting this mode of punishment? Mm -hmm. Because it, it never couldn't go take away a phone from a child at George's. It, it, was, it can't happen. Not, so, not, not with, without the parent coming on correct. board with that. So, how, so it's okay to say it, that's how they should, mm -hmm. but the parents still don't <coughs> So how, is the, how are we going to support this? Are parents going to get courses in parenting? Is there going to be some kind of campaign? How are we going to get wide-scale mm -hmm. buy-in into this kind of... Well, it starts with education, really. Yeah. And we have started that as a commission. We've been running many workshops. We had one just yesterday in St. Anne, mm -hmm. in Brownstone, where parents showed up. We started that conversation. And we're actually conducting a survey because the survey on corporal punishment will also give us a better view of not only why, why, why parents choose to use that, that uh, mode of discipline, but what the other issues are. So should so we that wait we until we've covered <coughs> this part before saying no corporal punishment? Well, we have, to, we have to say no corporal punishment from now, and mm -hmm. then we also simultaneously do the education and the training, because it's going to take a mindset change. And when you're used to doing something a particular way for so long, it takes a while for you to even understand and appreciate where we're going. But I think we have to start where we agree. I think generally everybody now agrees that there's just too much aggression out there. And we're saying corporal punishment is a violent act. There's just too much violence, too much aggression. And if we can start there and agree, then we can start to show now the correlations between what's happening at home and what's happening in the society. And what we're really, even without realizing, teaching our children, that they were to resolve every single issue. You know, when a child takes another child's pencil in preschool, I think that's regular. Eh? You take a, but when a, the child whose pencil was taken grabs the pencil and then uses it to stab another child, and the parent says, yes, something is wrong with Where that. Where are we with this now? Is this law? What, what are you trying to do? Well, there, Can you tell the schools that they can't? 
Well, I know they, 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 and I don't speak on ministry's policies, yeah. I can tell you, but I know that there are certain pronouncements that the Prime Minister has made, and so I think they're moving towards policy now and legislation and so on, because corporal punishment is still on the book for books for preschool, but I think that's where they're moving. But as a parenting commission, our responsibility is to ensure that parents get on board. We need to start the conversations. We have started the training. We're doing a survey. I'm looking forward to seeing what the surveys will reveal so that we can also know what programs, what other programs, supportive programs, we need to put in place to help parents. All right. What about the, the, the Bible phrase? Oh, uh, that's so misconstrued. Um, the rod was never a physical rod. And even with physical rod, it was never used to hit any sheep. I say that all the time. It was used <laughs> to guide and bring the sheep back in line. So, and then what about the other one that says train up a child? Train is coaching, modeling, explaining, mentoring, and then also giving children an opportunity to demonstrate and you continue to guide. So that one about um, don't spare the rod and spoil the child. The rod was never supposed to be taken that literally. Yeah. It is a guide. I, mean, I think mama didn't know that. But well, well, and, but, but this is where we are, Neville. This is yeah. where we are. I like your passion. Yes, thank you. Thanks for coming. Yes. Chief Executive Officer of the National Parenting Support Commission, Acacia Carr. The importance of reading. We're going to talk about that after this.